And this brings me to the news of today, to the huge, huge news of, of today, which is, yes, yes, the alpha is out. Hyperon is about to have its alpha release, which happened yesterday. And in appreciation of Ben Gertz, I will wear a hat today, all right? For the Hyperon alpha release, let's wear a hat as long as we talk about Hyperon in appreciation of Ben Gertz. And also, yes, um, what what do you call these things? Yay! <laughs> okay, right here, Alpha. You. Um, I don't know what to call these things in English. Maybe you can drop the name in the chat. And the Alpha is out. Yes, the Alpha release. Finally, and a few more of these. Uh, let me know the name of these in the chat. <laughs> All right, good. Now that we have been silly for a while, let's talk Alpha. All right, let's read through this here. Um, by the time of the beta release, which hopefully is less than a year from now, it should be capable of efficient, massive scale computing running on decentralized compute data infrastructure like Singularity Net, NuNet, and HyperCycle. And again, I am very, very excited and happy about the alpha release, which finally happened now. Now, if we look at the alpha release, um, uh, it's this year, and we also looked at this last week. It's mainly, mainly for developers, AI researchers, people like that, okay? So uh, it's not necessarily usable for the normal everyday day user like you and me. Uh, but this is still a huge, huge, amazing, big step. So let's look into that. What we have is this uh, meta language um, sum up and tutorial, basically. So down here, we have a few points about meta. Something that I found very noticeable are, for example, here, programs are fully self-reflective. We can read, modify the code inside the programs. And this is an amazing thing about the meta language. The meta language basically allows um, the, the AI system to learn by itself, right? Self-reflective. And then down here, it enables a wide range of AI systems to dynamically collaborate which is really the heart and core, or maybe I should say brain of Hyperon. It allows multiple AGI approaches to collaborate with one another, which is freaking amazing. Now, other things you can do here is you can right, go here to GitHub uh, and get everything that I've put out here. You can go to learn. And here we have a basic tutorial for Meta. Uh, and if you're interested in learning Meta, you can go through that. If you're a developer, definitely go through that. And then we have the playground over here where you can put uh, your own Meta code and then you can run it, right? <laughs> there's no code, so there's nothing here. Um, but yeah, in this playground, you can test your own Meta code, which is freaking amazing because it opens up Hyperon, Meta, and everything. Uh, I want to learn this language. Amazing, Nani. If you want to learn, learn this language, run over to the playground and, and dive into it. Are you a developer? Nani, if you're a developer, um, that would be amazing. We'll get into that in just a moment. But yeah, if you want to learn Meta, head over to meta.lang.dev and yeah, look into the tutorial. All right. And yesterday they announced the alpha release on their YouTube channel and made a, made a live about the alpha release. And I've seen a few of you over there. I've seen a few of you over there. Let's listen to what Ben Gertel said over here because this I found particularly interesting. And again, I hope you can hear the sound. What's, what's a clearer path now, what it seems very clear that we know how to do is scale up Hyperon so we can do large scale versions of all the promising classical AI approaches in modernized versions, have them operate together and run those on massive amounts of hardware, combining centralized server farms and, and decentralized AI networks. And th this is like a practical thing that we're in the middle of doing, of doing right, right now. So, I mean, it... all right. Uh, first of all, how amazing is that? He just explained what we just saw on the playground on the um, yeah, playground and on the tutorial example, where it says Meta is there to combine multiple AI approaches, AGI approaches together. Uh, and then he also just said that they are in the middle of implementing or acquiring centralized and decentralized compute. 
And this is also what I've talked about last week and maybe even the week before, that we are really right now seeing mass acquisition of compute, right, of network space and power. This is what the uh, released unbound AGIX tokens will be used for, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and this is what the Unity collaboration will, will be for. Big uh, institutional money will go all into compute, which he basically kind of confirmed. Of course, he didn't say, yes, the Unity money will go in there and all of that. But he just said, yes, we are in the middle of acquiring centralized and decentralized compute because this is what it's all about, scalability. Uh, and uh, a few of you have been there yesterday in the stream. And Nani, I, I know you've been there and a few others of you uh, as well. And this one guy talked about, um, about the Moss law and yeah, the Moss law uh, and about how transistors, I believe, uh, on GPUs and CPUs will get smaller and smaller and it will get faster and faster and more and more efficient. And that compute will get cheaper and cheaper and smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller. Um, yes. This is true to some degree. Of course, we have seen this happening so far. But uh, first of all, Microsoft and OpenAI are not out of the blue planning a $100 billion server farm for 2028, right? This has been worked on and planned for 2028, a $100 billion server farm if they wouldn't need compute. And if I wouldn't think that compute will be needed in the future, and when it comes to more Moore's law, also let's look at this here real quick. As it says, um, as it says over here, some believe that the physical limits of Moore's law should be reached at some point in the 2020s. If you keep printing components, you can put more in one inch squared chip. The more you put in that square inch, the hotter it gets and the harder it is to cool it. Moore himself admitted that the fact that materials are made of atoms is the fundamental limitation and it's not that far away. We are pushing up against some fairly fundamental limits. So one of these days, we are going to have to stop making smaller things. Yes, we cannot keep making smaller things because at one point we will reach a physical limit. We need to cool it more and more. And the thing that could, or quote unquote, the saving grace here could be quantum computing. But with, with quantum computing, we have the exact same issue, if we would say it like that, the cooling. Especially when it comes to quantum computing, it needs to be cooled like crazy. Uh, we can understand that by thinking about what temperature is. Temperature is basically just the movement of particles. This is basically temperature describes the movement of particles. If particles move very, very fast, the temperature is higher. If particles move very, very slow, the temperature is cooler, right? This is temperature. For quantum computing, we need particles to barely move at all. So we need to cool quantum computing to almost zero, right? Zero, absolute zero would be no movement at all. Um, <laughs> this is, of course, and nothing does happen. So we need some form of movement, but yeah, this is what we need for quantum computing and this form of cooling. Um, if we use that for smaller chips, then we might as well use it for quantum computing, right? So yeah, this might be our saving grace when it comes to compute, but it's not likely to happen in a mass scale anytime soon. So yeah, we will need compute in the future. There's no way around that. Um, and people who argue with Moore's law can talk as much as I want. We'll wait and we'll see. But I also strongly believe, uh, yeah, there are physical limitations at one point. At one point, you cannot get smaller. It's just not possible at one point. So then, yeah, we need other solutions and we need this massive server farms. And this is also where where Nunet is coming in. 